Good evening. This is Strange Love, and I'm your host, Cami Chaos. Welcome, babies. Please, please, dare to go where you fear, especially when working to make a dream come true. Rising above your fear helps you to realize that you are totally unlimited. And I learned this when I went to Afghanistan at the age of 22. Now, my inspiration to rise above my fear came from a shaman in Kali Baba who taught me about Hindu mysticism when I lived in the mountains of Nepal. He would travel to Asia with just the clothing on his back and a great faith in the universe. Everything took care of him, and I thought I should try this theory for myself. So I went to Afghanistan with $100 in my pocket, no credit cards, no promise of a job and a one-way ticket. My dream was to see that people and situations can be positive wherever I go on the planet. Everything worked out, trust me. <laughs> this was the first thing I saw when I was in Kabul. I landed in the airport. We like to call this the first class lounge. The Taliban shot down this plane, and the government couldn't afford to get it off the runway. Good evening and welcome to Strange Love Live Tech Edition. I'm Cami Chaos, your host, and as always, I'm joined by Dr. Normal. Hello. Uh, that first uh, one minute, that clip that you saw or, or heard, depending on how you're partaking of the podcast, was Liz Grover's Ignite Portland 3 presentation. That's right. And tonight we're joined by Liz Grover. Hey. How you doing? Good. Thanks for having me. I'm <laughs> glad you're here. Thank you. So your Ignite presentation, tell me what inspired you to, pre to submit the presentation and then tell me where it led you. Well, um, I stumbled upon, literally was stumbled upon Ignite um, before I really knew about the tech community. And it seemed really interesting and I missed the first one, which was a bummer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but then um, I got more involved with the community and... Um, for some reason, I was just really tired of doing web design and always being on a computer. So I thought it'd be really cool to try speaking in public mm -hmm. because, you know, it's not by a computer all the time. So, um, I made that decision and I thought, well, what am I going to talk about? So I thought, well, what is the thing that would probably grab people's attention? And then I thought of my story of how I got to Afghanistan would do that. So obviously it worked. Mm -hmm. so. And so now tell us, Afghanistan was not the first place you traveled. No. You had a history of traveling. Yeah. Um, I've been traveling since I was about 15 mm -hmm. um, in the country. Anytime I had like a school vacation or, you know, a weekend, I would try to get away. Um, sometimes with my parents knowing and sometimes not. <laughs> um, so I started going to places around the East Coast uh, mm -hmm. where I grew up. So, you know, New York, Philadelphia, D.C., uh, Quebec, Boston. And um, then I just kept traveling and it never really stopped. <laughs> where was the first place out of our country that you went? France. France. Mm -hmm. And were you by yourself? I uh, traveled around with a friend. Mm -hmm. Um Sometimes I was by myself, and um, it's funny because people ask me this question, like, you know, did you go here by yourself and there by yourself? And pretty much I always meet people mm -hmm. <laughs> right away, even if I try to have a vacation to myself. Mm -hmm. So I always make friends <laughs> pretty easy where I go. So, so even if you're like, I'm going to go, I'm going to have some Liz time and travel so somewhere, somewhere, you just right away pick up somebody and you have a traveling companion? <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> nice. Um, I either have a companion or I end up staying with locals. So, so then when you were, did you say 22 in the video or 23 when you went to Afghanistan? Um, I was 22. 22. Yeah. So you, you had your, your, your journey. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it and then tell us a little bit about your Ignite presentation about it. Um, well, the journey to get to Afghanistan, um, I came to Portland for a short time and I didn't really know what to do here. Mm -hmm. I wanted to stay, but I couldn't find a job. I didn't really know where I fit in and I didn't feel like it was my time to stay. Mm -hmm. So I had uh, one uh, contact in Afghanistan and he was sending me emails saying, you know, it's actually pretty cool over here and I love it. I'm like, huh? So I thought to myself, like, things aren't really working out in Portland and, you know, I've always wanted to live in a Muslim country, so 
I emailed my friend and I said, hey, what do you think about me coming and, and crashing with you for a little bit and see what happens? What's the job pool like? <laughs> and uh, he said, yeah, come over. Like, it's, you know, pretty easy to get a job here. So went over and found a job within uh, like three weeks. So how long did you stay? Um, I stayed for just under two years. So um, during that time, um, I had a number of different jobs, but most of my work was with the UN. So. And when you came back, why did you come back to Portland? Um, <laughs> well, uh, Portland makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. And ever since I found Portland, it always made sense to me. Um, and I just feel at home here. Uh, when I walk down the street, I feel like I, I belong. Um, and, uh, you know, after being two years in Afghanistan, Portland looks really good. <laughs> <laughs> so um portland is the first place i moved around a lot as a child yeah. back and forth from one place to the next sometimes back to the other place and portland was the first place that i ever decided to live that it was my choice and it was because the first time i visited here for three days i decided that it was the only place that i had, had ever felt at home yeah and so i i can really get that yeah. It's home. Yeah, totally. So you did your travels. You came back to Portland. You submitted a presentation for Ignite. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the, the creation. I've made my own Ignite presentation. It was very different than yours, though. Uh, tell us a little bit about the process of making the presentation, writing the presentation, and coming together with the slides. Well, um, so, you know, after I submitted my idea, I didn't really think about how it would play out until about two weeks before mm -hmm. and I took maybe three days to work on it and um, I just kind of like wrote down random notes you know nothing that was really focused but I just let whatever had to come out come out mm -hmm. onto paper and um, you know all of a sudden it's like doodling and notes and notes and then here's this framework in front of me I'm like, oh, that works. <laughs> so um, I uh, just started to, you know, write it like a book mm -hmm. and um, put in the juicier details. And uh, and then I memorized it. Uh, I don't know who I practiced it with. Uh, I don't even, you yeah, know, maybe I practiced it with my husband here uh, a couple of times. But most of the time I was, like, sitting in my basement shouting it and... <laughs> And then I got it, and, and that was it. I practiced mine in my basement, too, but I had the luxury of microphones mm -hmm. <laughs> and a projector behind me. <laughs> yeah. So you did your presentation at Ignite. It was well-received. Yeah. And then something happened. What happened after Ignite? <laughs> well, that night, it was really interesting because um, I didn't think I'd do that well. Mm -hmm. I was sweating bullets and uh, didn't know what to think about all these people looking at me. When I got up there, it felt really normal. It felt like I was another person. Mm -hmm. um, so I didn't mess up on my presentation, obviously. And then, um, you know, after Ignite was over, um, that night people came up to me and said, you know, do you have a book? No, I don't. <laughs> do you have a book? Do you have a book? Do you talk regularly? And these questions kept coming up. And... Um, in life, when questions from other people in my external world keep coming up like that, I start to listen. Mm -hmm. So I did. And, um, you know, it's funny because I thought about a month before um, Ignite, somebody asked me, you know, when are you going to write your book? And I'm like, that's just one question. I'm going to wait until yeah. more people ask me. And so that happened at Ignite. And I thought, well, now's the time. So uh, the next day, I sent out an email to about 20 friends who I thought either you know, they knew of a writer or had an agent or, you know, somewhere in the network. So I sent them my Ignite video. Thank you very much, uh, Linux Aid. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> really AJ, helped. for letting us use that, too. <laughs> um, and uh, I, you know, sent out this email. Well, first I Googled. <laughs> Love Google. Uh, you know, what do you do when you're writing a book? And, you know, pretty much I found that you need an agent. Mm -hmm. You don't always, but... It's if, a good place to start. Right. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, well, uh, 
let's get an agent. And in that email, I said, you know, does anybody know of an agent? And here's my Ignite presentation, and this is what I want to write about. So that, I believe, was on a Thursday. And the following Monday, I got an email from an agent. Um, and this was really cool because one of my friends is a fairly well-published author. And he said to me in a, a return email, I'm like, ha ha, Liz, good luck. That's a long <laughs> march finding an agent. Ha ha. I'm like, okay, well, you're just uh, setting up the stage for my success then. Mm -hmm. I didn't tell him, but if yeah. you're going to challenge me, then we'll, we'll continue and roll it out. But, um, so <clears throat> yeah, that Monday got an email from an agent and she said, send me your proposal. And I emailed her back and I said, you know, what do you need? And she said, well, I need the first 50 pages of your book, a synopsis, a bio, etc." So I thought about it for a couple hours. Okay. Well, what do I do next? And, um, uh, I, you know, responded and I said, okay, I'll have the book proposal for you within a month. Um, I had nothing at that time. <laughs> <laughs> so it was a mad rush to do it, but mm -hmm. I felt the momentum and I, I had to go with it. Mm -hmm. So, so now a month later you submit it. A month later I submitted it and, um, I'd say about three weeks later, about a week after our wedding. I'm not really clear on the exact day, but um, I got an offer and a contract. And I signed it and sent it over. So, And now the book is almost done. It's, uh, it's there. I finished writing the last chapter this week. Wow. And uh, uh, it's going through edits. So Very cool. And there are some photos that you sent over for us. Yeah to use are those in the book um it depends on what the publisher says so but in theory in theory if yes. you had your way they'd be in the book yeah some of them yeah so i'm wondering if dr normal can and put those up and you can kind of talk us through some of them uh i do uh let me uh i'll turn let's, the monitor let's over stall here for so time. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah um the pictures that don't make it in my book will definitely go on my website and that's kind of what i plan to do with the whole book Whatever gets cut out in editing, mm -hmm. that will go up in some form, too. As, will that be at LizGrover.com? Mm -hmm. LizGrover.com, everybody. I think the photos we got were um, from uh, from Nepal, Yeah, I that's believe. from Nepal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's Kali Baba. Um, he is my number one guru who taught me all about meditation and Hindu mythology. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, that is from a pilgrimage that we took in the Himalayas, and he's actually 70 in that picture. No way. He's 70. He's been doing yoga all of his life, and um, he looks much younger. Yes, he looks, he looks like, much younger. I looked at those photos earlier. Yeah. That's East Timor. Um, That's a beautiful picture. Yeah. I worked there back in 2007 um, doing website management for the country's parliamentary election. So. Uh, and therefore, the tech tie-in for the people in the chat room. <laughs> yeah. We're wondering why this is a tech episode. Yes. It is. And also, there's some technical aspects to writing a book that maybe we'll get right. into. So you were doing website management? Yeah. Yeah. Um, for the parliament, you said? For the parliamentary election in East Timor in 2007. And um, I did that in Afghanistan, too. I did that with the parliamentary election. So you were a web designer and webmaster in yeah. Afghanistan? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, <laughs> it's interesting because uh, think about doing a website. And, you know, that website in particular, we had to report election results for 5,000 candidates uh, over the course of two weeks, about once a day. And you have to remember that a lot of people in Afghanistan were warlords. Mm -hmm. So when some people aren't happy with the results on the website, they're not too happy. With the person who put the website? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so, we missed a picture. You had a picture up. Yeah. I, I oh, think that's, was, that's East Timor. That's so. East Timor in election, the purple finger, right. I believe. So. Yeah, he's got the inked finger from right. voting. And... Um, we we showed a little bit of your ignite presentation in the beginning, which has this the shot of the um, the airplane, as you called it, the first class first class lounge. Yeah, first class lounge. <laughs> yeah. So. Well, I think um, 
and and you were asking Cami about the publishing aspect of a book. Can mm-hmm. you can you step us through that a little bit? Uh, kind of how how in the uh, I guess in the internet age, you you have an agent. I mean, people can self publish books now as well. So h- how does that work now today? Like in two thousand and nine, where you have a manuscript and you're trying to shop this around. Um. Well. Um, from what I've learned in publishing in the book world so far, um, anything can happen and there's so many different cases. Um, so it's hard for me to give guidelines <laughs> for, uh, one way, but is this I, a traditional kind of publishing arrangement or is it electronic or how's this working? Uh, for me, it's a traditional arrangement. So, okay. so it's like some publishing house in New York and the whole deal type thing and well i don't i don't know um who i'm going to go with for publishing Ah, yet so So. just get the get the agent and yeah and yeah it's um you know you you can get a good agent and and go for it that way i feel like because of my subject matter that i can go that way and and uh you know break into something so do you you have a backup plan i mean is it is it like basically you have the manuscript manuscript on Afghanistan and then oh by the way here I've got this uh, web design book as well <laughs> that we could shop to O'Reilly or something <laughs> yeah yeah I mean you know I uh you know I believe yeah. that you can do it through through any channel yeah you know yeah. it just takes some work but um for example I mean my thought has been um if I don't get a publisher fast enough I'll just go and self-publish it on the mm-hmm. internet, and mm-hmm. I'll do some internet strategy, and there you go. Why not? I mean, it's... Because the internet is our friend. Right. Right. I mean, um, and you have uh, so many options to... Uh, also, with multimedia, and, and, and the Kindle is very popular right now, and mm-hmm. a lot of people are saying, well, this is, you know, the new model. Um, you have photographs, you have videos, and things like that that you can also incorporate Oh yeah. Um, it seems you know it seems interesting that you 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 have several avenues with your material. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, you know, I could make the choice just to to do it myself on the internet, but uh, this is what has flowed easy for me. And when something flows so easy, I go with it. Yeah. <laughs> so. Well, I mean, and you you have so you have a, a publishing agent. So I mean, are they? Is the industry savvy to that, or or is no. it? Or, yeah. No, um, I've talked to a couple of people. I've talked to some published authors about their internet internet strategy because, you know, that's what I focus on. And I've been focusing on internet strategy for the past five years. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, they have no idea like why I use Twitter, <laughs> for example. Um, Twitter's like, our friend. They've heard about it. Oh yeah, like oh Obama used it. Would, but why, you know, um, so yeah. And, um, what's really cool about my book proposal is that since I've, uh, focused on internet strategy for so long, I have this whole like plan Mm -hmm. in the strategy of how I'm going to, you know, attack the internet. Mm -hmm. And, uh, most publishers haven't seen anything so detailed. They have no idea. So I I think that's going to help me for sure. So that's actually part of your, your plan with the that you oh wow that's great so you're bringing it to them yeah totally i mean i've done some (laughs) i i have some really cool people um supporting me um from my past and in my career and i actually have one organization who's going to send out my uh book trailer Mm -hmm. to their list of two hundred thousand people very nice so i'm gonna kick off the book uh marketing with that Mm -hmm. and i have other people too but not not with a list that big <laughs> yeah that's very so, nice yeah do we have more pictures uh i think i think right now that's that's what we've got for okay. the for the moment so as far as photographs go we can look up some more in after hours but i think there's there's some some other technical difficulties so we should just move along yeah you know yeah. it's 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 running fairly smoothly <laughs> <laughs> okay that's okay I can go without photographs. So do you feel like your um, technical involvement with the internet that you're 
you know, the web design, everything um, enabled you to be able to move. It, it's kind of an interesting thing that that your your ability to use technology so well has enabled you to travel. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, it's it's interesting. And um, it's a great blessing that I can do it. And mm-hmm. it's so funny because I still don't think I'm a techie person. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I'm not um, someone who likes to do code. I hate code. Mm-hmm. Um, I like pretty things and pictures mm-hmm. <laughs> and video. But um, when I was in Afghanistan, um, pretty much what happened was I had a job in reporting Mm -hmm. and the UN, uh, for elections, the UN restructured itself and I lost my job. I'm like, Oh, I'm here in Afghanistan without a job. What am I going to do? So my friend who ran the graphics department said, well, we need a website manager. You can do that. I'm like, I can. She's like, yeah, you'll pick it up. Don't worry. So she knew that I never managed a website before. Mm -hmm. And then she threw me onto this website (laughs) It worked. Yeah, it worked. <laughs> so you don't like to code, but if you're backed into a corner, yeah, you can learn something. Yeah. So I picked that up, and the great thing is that, you know, after Afghanistan, to, to find work and interesting things to do, um, I would approach people and say, you know, your website could have this, and you mm-hmm. could be doing this. And, you know, because I was interested in nonprofits and international development, I would approach organizations and say, well, if you really want to reach donors and tell your story um, and make money, um, you're going to have to do this. <laughs> you're going to have to have photos. You need a story, not just reports and statistics. That's mm. boring. It's so um, after Afghanistan, I did that um, with an organization that had uh, projects in Cambodia. They were based out of Portland at the time. Mm-hmm. So I uh, you know, came from Afghanistan back to here um, told a guy that nicely that his website was a joke and, and went off to Cambodia to get pictures and stories for his website, put mm-hmm. those up for him. And then that was it. So I've kind of functioned like that with a couple so of projects. What was the last trip that you took? The last trip that I took as a work trip or a fun trip? What was the last, what was the last journey that you went on? Um, For whatever reason. (laughs) Uh, I went to India. Mm -hmm. And I went there for my Indian wedding. So. And that was very recently. I remember seeing the pictures on Twitter. Yeah. Or on Flickr. That they were tweeted. So it was both. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Went to India. We did the honeymoon thing in Bali. Mm -hmm. Um, It was a great whirlwind tour. And then Sam got to see my place in Nepal. And my guru. So. It was very nice. It was totally like full circle, you know. It's like finally I was in Asia and I actually had a partner and like mm-hmm. family and friends where, you know, usually I was just a backpacker and working. So. Mm-hmm. And what is your next trip? <laughs> well, uh, we are going to the Southwest and we're going to go hang out and hike and look at pretty rocks. It's a lot of pretty rocks in the Southwest. Mm-hmm. Are there any things that you plan specifically to see? Well, we're going to land in Vegas and live it up for a night, Mm -hmm. of course. Um, And then we're going to go to Grand Canyon uh, and Zion National Park, and we'll see what happens. Have you been to Grand Canyon before? Um, I've flown over it, and I've been to the Grand Canyon. That's not the national park. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, you know, still a canyon, but I haven't been to the national park, so. I haven't been since I was a little kid, but I remember that it was awe-inspiring. Mm. So, and, and all the photography is yours, right? As far as your photographer, and so you get, get all that stuff. And, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you, are you in, you're in process? You got that up on your website, or are you working on kind of pulling that together on the site? Or um, my website's pretty new. Yeah. But yeah, I link to my Flickr uh, uh, okay. Flickr site. So okay. I think if you go over the different pink orbs, yeah, it takes you different places, including her blog and her uh, Twitter account and her Flickr account. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you're a little bit busy with the book, so. How long does that, I mean, is that, uh, you know, is this like a 10, 12-hour day, or what's what's that like? Uh... Is that what you're doing right now, or are you doing anything else as well? 
I'm not doing anything else because you just... really hunkered down after Ignite and yeah, really focused. Yeah, I gave up because that was less else. than a year ago. Yeah, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was last June. 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 Yeah. yeah. I read your some of your tweets after that. After I followed you after seeing that presentation, it was like, okay, I'm getting off Twitter now. I'm <laughs> like, you know. Yeah, I, I've been writing and tweeting. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. At least it's and they're two very different things. Right. Uh, but actually, tweeting helps me in my writing. So I, I think it detracts. Really? From how? Mine. <laughs> because you have to focus on the point, you know, and get down to it. And it oh, see. So, so what you're saying my... is the book on Afghanistan is going to be 140 characters. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see, I've learned so well to condense what I'm saying into the DM 140 it. characters that I now tweet blog post. Like, I'll tweet a thought that could have once been an entire blog post for me. Now it's just 140 characters. I would have written like a whole thing about it, and now I'm like, I have nothing to write about. I tweeted that earlier. <laughs> eh, nothing. Yeah. Hmm. We'll see what happens with blogging later. But um, <laughs> yeah. So, oh, your question. Um, yeah. So pretty much since Ignite, I've only been writing, um, running around, getting ready for different weddings that we had because mm-hmm. we had one here too. Mm-hmm. Um, and then. I had like a part-time job, um, but then it, it was ending just at the right time, and I didn't want to renew my contract, and I just started to write in October full-time, mm-hmm. and um, thanks to the wonderful support of my awesome husband, Sam Grover, um, I've been able to do that without worrying about too much, so that's Very been nice. a, a great blessing. And, um, yeah, so from October to November, I was pulling eight hour days in November before I left, uh, for India on Thanksgiving day. Um, I started to get the beginning of carpal tunnel, which was really, really lame. Um, so I didn't really know what to think about that, but I knew that I was going to India. So, you know, I'd have, I'd have a vacation. So it went away, which was really cool. Um, about two weeks later, but then when I came back in January, it started again within yeah. a week, not even writing within the first week. Like I once you've agitated that. Yeah. 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 So, um, yeah. So I got the carpal tunnel in full force, but luckily I saw some great healers, went to physical therapy and, um, found the things that worked and, um, the carpal tunnel is uh, mostly subsided, and I get a little achy, but it's nothing yeah. like it was back in January. Like I was, yeah. I was afraid in January that I couldn't finish my book. Like it was yeah. so bad, um, I couldn't even sleep at night. I had to wear braces in bed. <laughs> it's kind of weird. I've been to the braces in bed place. Before, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but the yeah. typewriter is not always your friend. Did you? Yeah. So, and you're you're doing this on your laptop, or yeah. So did you did you get like the special keyboard or anything like that? Try any of those things? Or? No, like, I mean I just put it in my lap and then I got an uh, upright mouse uh, and I got exercises. And did uh, you ever get to do the paraffin dips? Yeah. Cause oh my god, I like those. Yeah, anyone who's never had a paraffin dip for their arm, get one. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Paraffin dips are awesome. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. So, um, what Dr. Normal strike me like I'm a jackass, but really paraffin no, I'm are, not. are the goods. Um, but I think it's time to wrap up the tech edition, but yes. you're welcome to join us for after hours, which is coming up next. Next week, we're going to have a repeat, but one that's never been uh, broadcast on Mogulus before. We're going to, uh, replay an oldie, but a goodie with Marshall Kirkpatrick. See you then. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Good night.